Meta and Google are two of the most popular stocks in the entire stock market. And after a horrific 2022 for both of these companies' stock prices, now may be a good time to start buying both of these stocks. But which one is the best buy in 2023? Well, in this video, I wanna analyze both Google and Meta, as well as share my thoughts on which company I think is the best buy right now. But I don't wanna waste your time, so let's go ahead and dive right in. So when I'm analyzing a business to figure out if it's a buy or not, the biggest question is what is the company's risk reward? And I think the best way to evaluate this is to look at four major factors and they are the financial position, growth, margin, and profitability. I believe that these key factors are important for assessing not just Meta and Google, but any company that you are looking to buy. So as I'm comparing these stocks, keep in mind that I'm using these metrics in order to determine which company has a greater risk reward. First, let's look at the financial positions. When we look at Meta, they have a solid balance sheet. The company has about two and a half times the current assets as they do current liabilities, and they also have over three times the number of total assets as they do total liabilities. Also, the company doesn't have a lot of debt, and because of how much money they make, they can easily pay off their debts. Plus, with over $14 billion in cash, Meta has more cash than they do long-term debt, so they could pay all of it off if they wanted to. Also, if you take their cash and the marketable securities, which can easily be converted into cash, they have almost two times the amount of their current liabilities. The company also has over $11 billion in accounts receivable as well, so their financial position is solid. When we look at Google, they also have a great balance sheet. They have about two and a half times the current assets as they do current liabilities and have a slightly better ratio than Meta with 3.3 times the total assets as they do total liabilities in comparison to 3.2. And like Meta, Google doesn't have a lot of debt and has a slightly better debt to EBITDA ratio, which stands for earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. Meta has a debt to EBITDA ratio of 0.24, while Google has a ratio of 0.16. The lower the ratio, the better, because it means that the company is more capable to pay off their debts. And when you think about companies that have a lot of debt, even if they become profitable, most of the money that they earn goes towards paying off interest on their debt. Both of these companies don't have to deal with that pressure because they have low amounts of debt and have high amounts of earnings. With almost $22 billion in cash, Google has significantly more cash than they do long-term debt and could pay it all off and still have a good amount of cash. Plus, with over $116 billion in cash and marketable securities, they have twice the amount of cash as they do current liabilities and more cash than they do total liabilities. Now remember, Meta has almost twice the amount of their current liabilities, but Google has more cash and cash equivalents than total liabilities. And this is not including the almost $35 billion in accounts for receivable. So while both companies have strong balance sheets, Google's financial position is one of the best in the world, if not the best. But now let's look at growth. When we look at Meta's growth, according to analysts for the next year, they are expected to grow under 5%. Now to put things into perspective, this is better than the almost flat line in revenues for 2022, but I think we'll get a better idea on guidance in their next earnings report on February 1st. Plus, when we talk about Meta's growth, I think there are a lot of factors to consider over the next few years. Meta has the potential to grow more with Instagram as their reels have taken off in terms of views. So even though TikTok is known for its shorter form content, Instagram is really making a push and their revenues in the space will pick up the more this format of content is consumed. The next aspect that has potential to grow is WhatsApp. Now I've used WhatsApp and I know there are a few ways that WhatsApp makes their money. So this could be a good provider of revenue as more businesses especially switch over to WhatsApp. But despite the possibilities Meta has with their major businesses, none of it compares to the Metaverse opportunity. This alone could be massive for the company in terms of revenue growth, but I think there are a couple of factors that need to be considered. First is time. How long do you think it will take for the Metaverse to generate substantial amounts of revenue? I have no doubt in my mind that this segment can give Meta revenue, but how long will it take people to join the platform so that Meta can generate revenue? The second aspect that I think is just as important is regulation. If we come to a place where more and more people are using the metaverse, there could be things allowed on the platform that would not be allowed in the real world. I mean, just to name a few, there's data protection and user identity for when we think about digital avatars, the use of smart contracts and blockchain, and with everything we have seen in crypto lately, we will probably need some regulation there as well. There are a lot of things that need to be built out and regulated first before I really see a lot of people rush into the metaverse. With the tremendous revenue potential also comes a lot of risk involved. And I think that this has to be considered if 
if you are thinking about buying Meta. So even though the revenue growth may not be as strong over the next couple of years, five to 10 years from now may be a completely different story. This all depends on how you view not just the metaverse, but Meta's ability to take market share in the metaverse. Now let's look at Google's numbers. Google is expecting much stronger growth compared to Meta as 2022, analysts expect them to generate 10% growth, and for 2023, they are expecting 8% growth, which is almost double that of Meta's. The biggest driver of growth is in the cloud, and in my previous Google video, I shared how they have continued to take market share despite AWS and Microsoft having larger revenue numbers. Plus, I really think that YouTube over the next five years will not only be even larger than it is right now in terms of consumers, but when you think about the platform that is focused on supporting and monetizing content creators, YouTube is the place to go. And to add to all this, they are the largest platform for social media that promotes all content from podcasts to medium term content and short form content, including YouTube shorts and YouTube stories. So there is no question in my mind that YouTube is not going anywhere. When I think about growth, there are benefits to both Google and Meta. Meta has the possibility for much higher growth, but Google's growth looks a little bit more stable. But hey, before we move on, I just want to say thank you so much for watching this video. And if you feel like this video is providing value to you, it would mean a lot if you hit that like button so that more people will be able to see this content as well. But back to the analysis, let's talk about margins. So in order to calculate gross margins, what you do is take the gross profit and divide it by the revenue. Then to get a percentage, you would multiply it by 100. Google has gross margins of 56%, so the business is efficient, and the company has continued to grow gross profits over the past couple of years. So what this tells me is that their revenue is outpacing the cost to make that revenue, and as they continue to grow revenues, their gross profits will grow as well. And if you know anything about Amazon's business AWS, this cloud segment generates massive margins. And so as Google Cloud continues to generate more and more revenues, they will have an effect on their margins, which I think is important to consider. Now let's look at Meta. Their gross margins are substantially higher than Google's at about 80%. So the business is extremely efficient. Now the company has lost some gross profits over the past couple of quarters, but we will see if this continues going into the new year. With all that said, there is no question that this company's margins are fantastic. But what will happen when they put more focus on the metaverse? They are planning to invest billions of dollars into building out the metaverse. So I do think this is something to consider over the next few years. But they did cut 11,000 jobs in November, so we will see how much of an effect that will have on the company moving forward. And lastly, let's talk about profitability. In a recessionary environment, this is extremely important for investors because if a company is profitable, there is less risk involved. There are a couple of metrics to look at when measuring profitability, and they are net income and free cash. Cash flow. Personally, when I'm simply looking at companies and trying to figure out future projections, I like using net income. But if I want a deeper analysis or I'm already invested in the company, free cash flow is more important. If you want to find free cash flow, what you do is take the operating cash flow, also known as the cash from operations, and subtract it from CapEx or the investments in property, plant, and equipment. So to compare free cash flow to other possible investments like a bond, the best calculation is the free cash flow yield, where you take the free cash flow and divide it by the market. Cap. Now, Meta has a free cash flow yield of almost 7%, which is fantastic. And off first glance, this looks like a solid buy. But the next question that we need to ask is will this cash flow last? With Meta investing more into the metaverse, this could mean that their research and development expenses go up, and that could reduce their free cash flow. I do think there will be a negative impact on free cash flow, but hopefully we will get some clarity from Meta's upcoming earnings report. Okay, now Google. The company has a free cash flow yield of almost 5%, which is still solid. But like with Meta, the question is, what's the company going to produce for free cash flow moving forward? A few days ago, it was announced that the company will be cutting 12,000 jobs, which was kind of expected. But if you look deeper into the company, you will notice that in September, the CEO said that he hopes to improve efficiency by 20%. And if you look at the previous economic downturn, Google did the exact same thing. So we can expect that free cash flow will remain the same same or move to the upside. Going into 2023, Google isn't trying to expand new products, but is really trying to focus on growing and expanding their core businesses. So this could be beneficial for Google shareholders. But like Meta, we will get a better idea of their efficiencies in the upcoming earnings report. Now, when we look at analyst expectations for Google, they are expecting EPS or earnings per share to grow from $4.71 to $5.22 in 2023. It is important to note that this is still lower than what we saw in 2021, but it's nice to see growth in earnings. 
However, when we look at Meta, analysts have the company actually reducing earnings from $9.07 in 2022 to $7.88 in 2023. And this goes to show that even analysts believe that Meta's net income will fall as well. If this does happen, that could mean Meta will have lower free cash flow too. And so even though it appears that the growth Google has probably won't be as great as Meta's, assuming they get into the metaverse, Google's revenue growth in the near term is much more stable and likely to happen. So the question becomes, is it worth investing? investing in Meta's risky but massive opportunity, or is Google's more stable, steady growth more appealing? I really believe this is up to you and what you want in your portfolio. If you're someone who has a lot of smaller, riskier companies, then it may make more sense to add something like a Google that can diversify your portfolio in the services they provide and the low risk that comes along with them. But on the other hand, if you're someone who already has a lot of dividend or value companies, then it may make sense to go with a potentially higher growth and more risky company like Meta. If you believe in Meta's execution on the metaverse, and you don't mind the slowing down of net income over the next few years, plus you're planning to invest for the very long term, then Meta stock may not be a bad buy at current prices. The way I see this is that their platforms aren't going anywhere, and especially with Instagram and WhatsApp, they will probably become more and more applicable. Now, personally, I'm buying Google over Meta. If you've been watching my channel, I already have a good amount of risk in my portfolio, so I wanted a stock that will give me good amount of upside with a lower amount of risk. And when I consider all the different metrics that I mentioned in this video, I think Google is the best option for me. Now, if my portfolio was different and I had a lower amount of risk, then I probably wouldn't mind taking on more risk with something like Meta. But personally, right now, I like the risk reward better for Google than Meta. And speaking of risk reward, I just started buying a new semiconductor company, which if you haven't seen that video, I'll make it available right here. Hope you all enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.